So uh, in your introduction, you, s you said that the, the audience might have questions about the, the ending. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, why don't we start uh, by talking about, about that, about the, the unusual structure of the film. Um, yeah. And I think it's actually unusual, not just because of the epilogue, but um, I think even the rest of the film is, is quite unusual in its, uh, in its structure. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. That I, I, when I start to write the script, I, uh, normally I let myself guided by the characters, so I don't have a, a structure that is already planned before. So, uh, and then I get carried away uh, by my characters. <laughs> and, um, at the end of the, when I was uh, ending the story of, um, of uh, Guillaume and Charlotte, I was kind of, um, I didn't, I, I find it very, um, in a way, harsh to end like this. And, um, and uh, they, even though they, they end up together and they meet again, the, the, the two siblings, and it's very beautiful that they meet together, I think, and, and they have each other still after what they have been facing. Um, but then I felt like I wanted to uh, kind of, uh, we are in this, I felt like we are in this room and the windows are closed and it's very dark. And I, I had this image of, let's go somewhere else, like in a summer camp where, or, I don't know, I was seeing these people dancing around the fire, I don't know why. And then I, I put that, um, that memory from my childhood, um, uh, from my early teen, teen years. Uh, in, at the end of the film, and for me, it was the, to, to go back in the early stage of love, where uh, love is, is 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 you know just holding a hand of of of, of someone is like the end of the world. It, you don't need more than that. It's just like it's you don't need to. There's no um, there's no need to take the person back home or whatever, or even kiss the person. It's just there, and it's like the end of something, and at the end of the world, like I said, because it's like overwhelming, but it's also the beginning of something else. So, so uh, I wanted to go back to that period, and then, uh, and, and then I, I'm also maybe in. Uh, I say, why not trying to 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 do that and to just have a, a variation of the same on the same theme of of, of early love, and um, and I was telling myself like it's so. Um, Cinema language and the way we tell stories is so conventional, and it's very rare that we uh, dare or to to break the to change the rules. And uh, but we do accept it, and sometimes in literature, uh, you can have uh, different characters uh, or changing narrator during the novel, or, or or you could end a novel, a very narrative novel, with a poem, and nobody will you know ask questions. Um, but in cinema, people are a little bit maybe more uh, timid because it's expensive, and of course you want people to not to get lost too much. So, um, so, so that's also the reason. Like I felt like I, you can you can also take it as you want. In in a way, you can you can maybe it's another a, a short story. Maybe it's a it's a coda, uh, like in the music. Maybe it's a. Uh, a poem, uh, and and in a, in a way, I know that it's um, people are sometimes asking. I, I understand, and it's very normal. And I know that people are asking themselves a lot of questions when it does, that story starts, and you're trying to make connection with the the, the story. It could be also a dream that Theodore has. It could have uh, like uh, Guillaume as, and it could it could be like something that they imagine that that he could have been also. He could have lived also when he was younger. You can you can see it as many ways as you as you as you want. But for me, it, if, if, if you, uh, I, of course, I hope that the, the viewer and the spectator will trust me and being touched by that story as well. But if he doesn't and he, 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 he enjoys some part of the, the other stories, then I'm also happy. I, I leave the, the audience free of, you know, um, liking or disliking it. It's not important as long as maybe you, will, you find something interesting in the film and that you can you know, bring back. And the boy we see in the, at the end is, is uh, Felix is actually a character uh, from a previous film of yours. Yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah, but you don't. Of course, you don't need to know that before yeah. uh, to understand the film. But I did a film called The Demons, which was my first feature film in fiction, and um, and it's he's the main character. So it's really like uh, yeah, I played a bit with this. Uh, he's, he's he's played with the same actor, and and uh, there was a and, and he's so that's his story, and he's. It's more or less my alter ego because that story actually took place in the summer camp in uh, in uh, the cat 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 skills, cat skills yeah, yeah here, and uh, it was a YMCA camp there and I um, yeah so I, I actually really lived like more or less that story, 
And um, maybe if I had the courage to kiss the girl back then, maybe I wouldn't make films. I would uh, <laughs> live like, comfortably in a suburb and, uh, yeah. So I had a question about how the, I guess the main part of the film is structured as well, um, even though we do eventually learn the connection between uh, Guillaume and, and Charlotte. Um, they don't really share um, a scene until the scene in the car, you know, and um, yeah. you, you do keep them pretty, pretty separate in terms of uh, just going back and forth um, between their stories. I'm wondering if you say you always start with the characters. Did you start with both of them? Did you start with one of them? Did one of them lead you to the other? I started with the both of them, yeah. Um, it's all ideas that, uh, of course, it's, um, I, I'm, I have a very autobiographic, I have to admit that I'm very autobiographic in what I do. So, um, or if I'm not, but I, I, can, also, I can also see myself in the three characters in, in the, the kind of the love period in your life where this can happen. So, um, but I've also I took like, of, of course, some stories uh, that happened to very, very close people of mine, but. But yeah, it's it's it, it's been a long while since I wanted to 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 do this uh, love uh, thing, uh, and I was very you know like ambitious. I wanted to make this like, like big kind of sort of a musical fresque about first love, but uh, and and also the importance of music because when you're that age, you we all you know build the we start to build the soundtrack of our own lives. You know, music comes becomes very important, and. Uh, some people, you know, we started with, uh, I don't know, with tapes and then CD and then now it's playlist, but the music is attached to our, um, what we are living and, and sometimes the music is also attached to the first feeling of love and, and then you discover the pleasure when you're a teen of putting salt on your wounds, you know, like your little love wounds and by listening to some very depressing or melancholic music or, or, uh, or whatever, but um, it's, so I thought the music also was going to be important in the film for that reason, but, uh, but then I, um, yeah, I don't know if, if yeah, I... I guess I was just, yeah, um, I, I did want to ask you about music, but I was just wondering about <laughs> keeping, keeping uh, you know, Guillaume and Charlotte's stories pretty separate, um, and also yeah. leaving out, you know, like, it's striking that the scene where you see them in the car with the, the parents, the parental yeah. figures, they're not even seen. You know, and to keep out those other details of their lives and to focus really just on what they're going through in, in these particular chapters. That, that seems like an interesting decision. To me. Yeah, but it's also because I, I don't know, they're... In a way, I, I have also uh, siblings, and um, that's why it's maybe even so important in the film, but it's also important, but it, it, of course... But we had our, 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 our own... I remember that we had our own stories and we were living in separated bu bu bubbles. And the, the parents also were very distant from that, you know? It's like uh, when you're a teen, everything is so intense, and that's why I think it's, a, it's an infinite uh, matter of uh, inspiration because a, a year in the life of, uh, of a teenager is like the equivalent of maybe, I don't know, five or six years in the life of an adult in terms of, and I mean, we think back of our childhood and, and teenagehood, it looks like it's the, the eternity. So, um, yeah, so I, I felt like it was, I didn't need to, it was not a, a, a film about their relationship as well, so. So in terms of, to come back to music, um, I think it's, it's not just the use of music that's, that's really striking in this film, but um, the repetition, which I think really gets to the idea that you're talking about in terms of how music becomes the soundtrack of your lives, because the songs repeat, and they repeat in different contexts, and it's sort of like also kind of what ties their experiences together in a way, you know, so um, can you talk a little bit about the selection of, 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 of some of the songs and, and some of the scenes and how you conceive them? For I think for me, one of the key scenes in the film is the scene on the dance floor, too, um, with um, Guillaume is like sort of uh, making yeah. his way through the dance floor. Yeah. Um, I had a, I, I'm very precise about the, the music I'm going to use, so I, it starts during the, the writing process, and I, I, I do my own playlist of the film that I'm working on and writing. And for me, it's one of the greatest uh, pleasure, actually, in my life is to, uh, to have the feeling that uh, when you, you write the scene, you imagine, you, you, and you have your headphones and you imagine the scene, and, and then you really like, get excited. And then, um, and then two years after, when the film you're in, in the edit suite, or three years after, depending on the, the financing, or f but and then you're back in the editing suite, and uh, you're.
putting that music that you had in mind on the, these images and then it's working. For me, it's one of the greatest joy I have in my whole life. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful and if I get goosebumps then I'm saying that, well, there's a chance maybe a couple of p uh, people will maybe feel the same. Um, so, uh, yeah. You say you write from a sort of, you know, an autobiographical perspective or you draw on autobiography in some way. Um, I'm wondering how that, can you talk about that in relation to writing a female character, especially one who, you know, goes through some, some pretty, I mean, her, what happens to her is, yeah. is, is, uh, is, yeah. is pretty grim, really. Yeah. Um, first of all, when I said that I can relate to her is, um, is that I, we, I've been also in that period where you're kind of in between relationship and you're kind of, um, you're, because at, it, one part of the trauma of being, of being uh, young is that you're, you're surrounded by the wrong people or falling for the wrong people. And you're not, uh, you're defenseless, defenseless in, terms of, in terms of that. And, and I've been in my uh, early you know, uh, life, even in my 20s, like uh, in, her, in, her, in her place where you're, you're meeting somebody, you get a bit uh, like, uh, you start to believe in, 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 in that relationship and suddenly the, the person gives you a date and uh, the person doesn't show up. And then you get so depressed and, and, and then the, the, the day after the person calls you or say, I'm sorry, and then uh, on the way to meet the person again, you already forgave uh, everything, you know? You kind of on the forgiveness mode because you want it to, 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 to happen and then even though you know it's not necessarily the, you know, the, 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 the person of your life or whatever, the love of your life, but you have this kind of uh, hope that it's, uh, and so in that period, you know, I can relate to that pretty much. And then what happened is that I, um, I um, a couple of years ago, I realized that I was very kind of um, um, innocent in a bad way, a, a bit like, uh, it's almost like I felt like so stupid to realize that, um, and it came very late in my life, uh, that um, one very close uh, girlfriend or girl uh, friend or that was one of, one out of two of them had, had experienced something that is uh, similar to that or some sort of uh, sexual aggression, and I was like. This is completely, it was like news to me. It was, it, and, and this all tells also how the society was working, you know, in, in that sense, you know. Because I felt so, so stupid that it, that it, yeah, it never really crossed my mind. And then I, um, and then I, I discussed with this, these uh, female friends and, 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 and then I, I felt like it was, I was going to address that in the film directly. Um, and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I thought it was, uh, even though if it's, it's, it's very touchy, I thought it was important to address it, yeah. I'm gonna take some questions from the audience, uh, and I think we have microphones as well, yeah. So if you have a question, please raise your hand. Okay. I can keep going. Come on. <laughs> just need one person right to break the ice. Yeah. Yes. I was just wondering about the school scenes, the classroom scenes, if that was autobiographical to you as well, because I found some of them very shocking, the way the teachers spoke to the students and what they talked about. Is that, <laughs> since, yeah, I was, since I was a teacher. I can say it here because I'm f I'm far away from Montreal. Well, not that that far, but I had this th th this teacher. <laughs> it was exactly the same character, and and uh, some of some of the people who had it also saw the film back in Montreal, and they say like, okay, this is like uh, from different years and different age because he's been teaching probably for 30 years or something, and. Um, it's very, very, also he was asking me to do impression of him in front of this class at, because I started to do that at the beginning and it was, uh, and then he felt that I had like a little bit too much of maybe, yeah, and then he tried, he, he actually tried to break me also. So, uh, so it's, there's a little revenge here, yes, in, uh, in that sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a microphone coming to you. I found the, the performances very beautiful, um, and I was very impressed, especially by some of the age of the actors. Um, 
I was wondering, um, I guess, how you work with, with the actors you used. And also, it seemed to me like there was a little shift in the, the approach, maybe perhaps, between the, the story in the beginning and then the camp scene. I was curious whether there was any difference as far as the way you worked with the, with the, there was something looser that felt in the camp. Something what, sorry? In the, the camp yeah. part of the story, it yeah. felt like there was something a bit looser in the way that the performances were mm -hmm. happening and the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the way you shot it. And I was curious yeah. about the process of, of that. That's also uh, what I like about the ending because it, the film transforms and becomes something else that almost like a documentary at the end, in the ending, for, for instance. But uh, for, the act, for the actors, but, but I, I was working the same way. It's just that it was, it was a very, uh, it was a very nice shooting in the camp. And uh, there was less also dialogue, so there were, and we were shooting during the real camp with real campers in the camp, so there was something magical out of the, so, um, but, uh, and also the kid, Felix, was really in love with the girl. And uh, that was a total coincidence. And uh, he wrote the song for her. And uh, before the, we shot the film, because I said, you're gonna play a song, I know you do something. You can. I, at first I wanted him to, to, to sing another song from Francis Cabrel, like a French singer. And, and then he said, I have my own songs. And I said, oh yeah, okay, so. And then I discovered that he wrote the song for this girl that I actually casted by coincidence. And then he did his scene at the end, and then, and, and then, he, <laughs> and then he d it was his last day of shooting, and then after, uh, after that, he, he, he went to her and he said, uh, the song was for you, actually, I wrote it for you. And um, she said, uh, let's, uh, let's be friends. <laughs> I can relate to that so much. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, the acting is, uh, I really like working with young actors. It's, most of it is casting. I'm look, really looking for act, actors also who are able to be natural. It sounds uh, crazy, but, uh, or very uh, like obvious, not crazy, but obvious. Um, because, but, but, I, but I feel that uh, it's, nowadays, you know, uh, especially in television, people are, you know, shooting very, on a very, very fast, you know, uh, pace. And I think that yeah, the, it's the actors, it, it, there's sometimes it's so bad and we accept this, you know, it's like nobody speaks like this in real life, and, but, but, but we accept it in, 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 in some acting for some reason because it, it became the norm and, and the mediocrity of acting became the norm in some sort of, you know, uh, I hear it more in television and in bad films. So, so I look for actors who are able to understand that natural thing that I... So I ask, I, I repeat them, you know, like, speak, speak in the film like you speak in the real life, and that, that, that's it, and then... So, and, but then I, I work with Theodore, and I, um, like the, the, the Guillaume, and uh, he... Um, because I, in Q&A sometimes I say I let my actors improve, and I give them, give them a lot of uh, freedom, and, and last time I did a Q&A with him, he said, that's not true. And, uh, and then he said, um, and then I look at him and I was afraid what I was, what, like, what he was going to say. And he said, um, you're leaving us free, but you're coming also with a, a lot of uh, precision, very precise on certain things. And I do a lot of takes also. Like I'm a bit of, yeah, so, so I get this natural tone or this moment where I, the actor is forgiving, is forgetting that he's playing in a film. And so I use these kind of uh, tricks sometimes to, by repetition and by, so, uh, yeah. Um, hi, I have two questions. One was in the scene when the main character stood up in front of the class and talked about his friend and, and all the students stood up, you know, clapped for him. But then later on, they sort of brushed him off. So I wasn't, that was a little confusing to me because it seemed like they were very supportive in the classroom when he, when he made the speech, but then they sort yeah. of shied away from him. That's one question. The other question was, I was just wondering exactly where it was filmed. Sorry? I was just wondering where it was filmed. Oh yeah, it's filmed in Montreal, mainly in the summer camp, also in Quebec. Um, I think it's. Um, 
I think it's uh, realistic, that the reaction. It's also the hypocrisy of maybe. I think I think I, I think they they get they get really impressed by the, the way he delivers his oral, and then they're they're charmed by the way he, you know he looks very sincere and the fact that he does it also in English, for him allows him to be a, like a, more or less on the thing because it's a it's a it's a second language so. It gives him maybe maybe yeah, by using an, uh, another language, it gives him the chance to be more frank and honest, like if he was a bit on a stage, uh, in a way, and um, and then I think that the reaction of the students, yet spontaneously, they're you know, more like the majority of us, they're they're touched by what's happening, but you have to uh, also to keep in mind that they are in this old boy, very conservative environment, and. Um, and between guys at that age, you know, and this kind of pr also privileged uh, kind of uh, milieu, it's these teenagers are at that age, especially young guys. They're like little fascists in a way, you know. They're they they want the they want the approbation of the of the of, of the group. They the the one who get respected are the ones who are either playing sports or being very smart ass, you know. And, and being able to bully and to, to protect yourself and to, so, and you have like a, a teacher like uh, we had, which we admired but feared at the same time and also like despised in a way, but we were, you know, fearing him so much and also wanted to be liked by him. So, so, so for me, it's really realistic that they're, they're kind of, uh, re like, first of all, yes, they're, they're charm and they're, and they're seduced by, by, and then they speak to each other they get the they get the version that we don't see from from the friend who's upset, and he say, "Oh yeah, he tried to kiss me. You know, I was drunk, and he tried to kiss me." But and then he can easily, you know, go around the school and create some sort of backlash. And uh, for me, this is a typical human behavior. But uh, maybe I'm a bit pessimistic. But this is, I think, very yeah. This can happen. We have time for a, f a final question, so let's down here. Thank you so much. Merci, c'était génial. Um, one thing that to build on the last question, uh, you you talk about love, but it's also sex and the confusion that we have at that age between sex and and love, yes. um, and sexual orientation. Even could you say something more about that? Um, yes, it's a large. Uh, I, uh, yeah, maybe I'm more Freudian than I think I am. But um, my previous film, The Demons, was about also the, 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 the I, well, I thought I had made a film about children fears, and uh, at some point one of my friends uh, totally saw the film and he said, uh, you did a film about the sexuality of, uh, you know, which was also kind of um, even, more, even more taboo than what I'm, uh, you know. Ex uh, but. But yeah, I think it's, uh, I'm interested in the movement of how, uh, yeah, of, of course, it, it's, it's like also the, the title in a way, like uh, it's maybe, it's, for me it's like it, 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 it responds, or it's a reflection of, uh, maybe I can quote uh, Leonard Cohen who says, uh, uh, love is the only engine of survival. And for me that impulse, which is also Sexuality and for me, say, the word sexuality is not reductive. Um, it is. It is what made I think is making the world turn uh, for the better and the worst. And um, and uh, yeah. So and and I think that also sexuality. If I if I look at at, at the, all the questions that I've been asking myself, because obviously I've been asking myself a couple of questions in my young years about my own sexuality, because it's very central in both of my films. Is because I find it very interesting that it's something that is con constantly in movement and it's changing and it's it, it's not something and it's um, and I come from also like the, I was a teen in the 90s so um, maybe it was a, a little bit more uh, conservative back then now I have you know friends who are like in the early 20s like my actors for instance and um, I'm very impressed when I speak to them because they have this kind of uh, Sexuality that is not really put into a category. It's more like, oh, sometimes I can fall in love with a boy, sometimes I can fall in love with a girl. And I think this is very beautiful and free, and we were not like at all raised to, to be thinking like that. So it's, 
a really a conception of it's something that is can change, can take different turns, can and uh, but it's also something that is very central in our lives and uh, and um, it's it's uh, it's the most beautiful thing. It's all, it can also be the most terrible, terrifying things and. Um, and we are trying to cope with it, and some people, you know, put everything under the carpet, and then they behave very badly for some other reason. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, and some people, you know, they accept to to be what they are, and they try to find, I don't know, be be, be truthful. And in, in a way, what what I maybe I I can end this uh, the, this conversation like, uh, on this point for me is uh, we we need to learn from these uh, young kids because they are not. They face, they go to to uh, for love without being like uh, uh, they don't they don't mistrust, they don't uh, try to protect themselves, and uh, as adults because we are we experience sometimes we 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 we've been hurt in love, sometimes we 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 can back off from uh, 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 an opportunity that would you know that would change our life and so. For me, love is a revolution, and we have to keep on being revolutionaries even when we are grown-ups and follow their example. I think that's a great note to end on. So, Philippe, thanks so much for the film and for coming. Thank you.